The Lord, we never just go to sing one another. This is coming like the cut the, the party anthem. I myself, the Savior with me, for I do not walk alone. I must feel His presence near me and His arms surround me true then my soul shall fear no real let him lead me where he will I will go without a moment and his footsteps follow soon bless the Lord we must have the Savior with us. Anything we do, we can't leave out God. He's the one that wake us up this morning. He's the one that keeps the party going. Hallelujah. And here we are. I just want to share a word with us this evening. And it is from the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 1. It reads thus. And the word of Nehemiah, the son of Achaliah, and it came to pass in the month Chislu, in the twenty years, as I was in Shushan, the palace, and Ananiah, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity, they are in the province, are in great affliction and reproach. The walls of Jerusalem is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept, and mourned certain days, and fasted, and prayed before the God of heaven. And said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandment. Let them hear, now be attentive to thine own ears, and thou must hear the prayer of thy servant. Praise the Lord. If I was to put a theme to this scripture, I would put the theme, Time to Rebuild. Time to what? Time to rebuild. The People's National Party, I want as a minister of the gospel to say to all of us, it's time to rebuild. It, when you say rebuild, it tells us that there was a structure before and the structure has deteriorated. But Nehemiah had a passion to build the walls of Jerusalem. And he said, it's time to rebuild. I'm saying to all of us, it's time to rebuild the joy. Our beloved brother, Paul Robertson, he was a builder. He came to South East St. Catherine and he built hope. He built families. Today his name is like a, a legacy. He has left a legacy in South East St. Catherine. Because he was a builder, he was a repairer of the breach, he was a repairer of family life, he was a family man, he was a great member of parliament. And today he has left a legacy, he has left a legacy in South East St. Catherine that is beyond imagination. He has left every house you go, 
his, his name is a household name Dr. Paul Robertson he was an unsung hero in life and he's an unsung hero in death today as we rebuild let us rebuild hope let us rebuild oneness unity joy let us all come together let us use the death of Paul Robertson as a symbol of coming together Nehemiah said it is time to build let us pray father what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and grief to bear what a privilege to take everything to God in prayer father here we are as we gather here in this forum to in remembrance of a great just son of Jamaica and so Lord as we all give our support as our, our, our Lord we, we call on the families and we say to the immediate families and in the be of good cheer the Lord give it and the Lord take it and so Lord as we gather here this evening we pray God for unity we pray for oneness you said how good and how pleasant it is for bridging to dwell together in unity Father, I pray a special blessing on this function this evening. I pray that the blood of Jesus will cover this place. Bless each and every one. Remember our party leaders. Remember the member of parliament, the councillors. Remember every comrade. Those who are listening on the various platform. I pray God that we will come together. Just as Nehemiah said we must build and repair the walls. And I hear the sound is said. Hallelujah. And let's the Lord builds the house. They that labor, labor in vain. And unless the Lord watch the city, the watchmen watch it in vain. Father, I speak peace. I speak togetherness. I pray God that we will continue to love each other. The Bible said, love your neighbor as yourself. And so Lord, we pray God that in the near future, the People's National Party will come back together and form the government of this land. Father, is hope. And as I look at that billboard that speaks to hope, there is hope in Jesus. Our hope is built on nothing else but Jesus' blood and righteousness. So I pray today on this platform that we are going to rebuild, work to go and come strong again. God bless you all. Enjoy this remembrance service in Jesus' name. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Thank you, thank you, Pastor Scott, for starting us off with the Lord because we know there's no better way to start than by invoking the presence of the Holy Spirit. So thank you again for joining us. I'm seeing a lot more comrades and I still invite you. If you're able to find a seat, find a seat as we prepare to go into our tribute section. But before we do that, I want to extend a special welcome to, firstly, the leader of this noble movement, Mr. Mark Golding. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Comrade Mark Golding, there we go. I also want to extend welcome to other officers of the party who are with us. And also to all supporters, all comrades, we say welcome. Thank you for joining us for this important service. All right, so the first tribute that we are going to take is actually from our party leader. Party leader, I want to invite you to the stage as we give our salute to a man who has done so much for this party. Thank you, Senator Gabriela Morris, who is the master of ceremonies for this evening's program. I want to formally welcome 
the officers of the party who are here, other senior members of the party, co-chair of the local government campaign, Mikhail Phillips, Comrade Philip Paulwell, my parliamentary colleague, and an increasingly good friend. There he is. Light bright in my eye. <laughs> and all the warriors and supporters of the People's National Party who are here, and even those who are not even part of that, but are here just to pay homage to a great servant of Jamaica and a great comrade, Dr. Paul Robertson. We have Carleen Curlew Robertson here. I just want to say how nice it is to see her at HQ, Carleen. Welcome. It's lovely to have you. And condolences to you. Comrades and brethren and sisters, how good and how pleasant it is for us to live together in unity. This is the second occasion that the party is gathering like this outdoors since COVID start Peter out now, we hope. At the, and so, was it um, Sunday? This weekend gone, we honored the blessed memory of Michael Joshua Manley, most, ex, most honorable former party leader. And that was organized by Region 3. And it was an extremely successful event. I think everybody who went felt that way. And it was professionally managed. I want to thank Comrade Carl Kirkland and Regional Chair, Comrade Dennis Gordon in particular, and Comrade Sol Sonia Gonzalez, whose idea it was to have such an event. But for me, what was the beauty of it was it felt like a true PNP function. We were all there. We were all there to honor the memory of our icon. And everybody was just happy to be able to speak about him, sing loud for him, and generally pay tribute to him. Tonight, we're here for another icon of the party, Dr. Paul Robertson. Others will have more to say, I think, about the details of his career in the People's National Party. Truth be told, by the time I got active in the party, Dr. Paul was already in the pavilion. But I got to know him, and increasingly so, over the last two years. Dr. Paul was a kind-hearted man. He was a man who would reach out to you and offer advice. And his advice was always very valuable because he had such a keen intellect, but also such tremendous experience of the party, the workings of the party, the structures of the party, and indeed Jamaica and the Jamaican political landscape. That advice helped me along the way in what has not been an easy journey all the time, comrades, as many of you will know. I have come into this position at a time when the party suffered a major electoral defeat. We only have 14 out of 63 members of parliament. We're small in the house, but we're not afraid. And we stand up for the rights of the Jamaican people and do what we have to do. And comrades, I think it's generally recognized that for the movement to achieve success, everybody must renew their commitment to the movement. Everybody must just come on board with the movement. Leaders come and go. And who the leader happens to be at a given point in time is a delegate's decision. And we'll just work with that and just carry the party forward and help the Jamaican people by fulfilling our mission. That is what Dr. Paul Robinson wanted to see happen. That is what he believed in. I spoke to him in January, I think it was the last time I spoke to him. He called me out of the blue. And we had a nice long chat conversation. And he told me, boy, you know, he was just starting to settle into his house, although he'd lived there for some time out in St. Anne. And he had all these boxes of books and other things that he had not unpacked. And he had decided now to unpack them because he was really feeling settled and he wanted to get more involved and, and help in any way he could. And I 
just saw that was so tremendous and he even asked me to reach out to the general secretary and tell Dayton, Comrade Campbell, anytime, stay in touch with him. You know, he wanted to be there for you. And I really appreciated that. So when we got the sad news a couple of weeks ago, I can't remember exactly how long ago it was. I think Manly Boyne or somebody told me and it was really a shock because we weren't expecting that. We know he'd had his surgery and so on, but we thought he was recovering well and his spirit was strong and we were looking forward to seeing more of him. So comrades, I'm not here to talk long. I don't think I've earned the right to talk long because I didn't know Dr. Paul as well as many of you. But all I know is the little time that I got to know him well, I was blessed for that. And I appreciated him and everything he did for me and I just hope and pray that his memory will live on in the party. He will be appropriately documented by some scribe for his tremendous service to the movement and his tremendous service to the nation. He will have an official funeral on Saturday, I believe, at the University of the West Indies Chapel. And that is only right and just. And I want to thank the government that they responded positively to that request. It is in accordance with the convention that he should get that as a former member of, of, of cabinet. Dr. Paul, your memory lives on. Rest in power and rest in peace. God bless you. Hear the man. Thank you, comrade leader. You know, when I, I looked at the long, long list of experiences that this dear comrade has, I was like, wow. He was a senator. He was a vice president of the party. He was a general secretary of the party. And he was a minister of government with several responsibilities. And that is a comrade that I believe any of us would want to emulate. And so tonight, it is indeed a privilege to be here, to hear his stories and hear of his, his legacy. And I want to add my own my own extension of condolences to his family who is here comrades i also want to remind you that the condolence book is by the front so if you have not yet gotten a chance to sign you can just go over and leave condolence uh by by the front up there all right so we're moving along with the tributes and I want to call to the stage our chairman, our chairperson, Dr. Angela Brown Burke to give her bout of greetings. Dr. Brown Burke, welcome. Good evening, good evening, good evening, comrades. Good evening, party leader, officers of the party, MPs, stalwarts, comrades who have been here, friends and family of Dr. Paul. I am honored and humbled to be able to pay tribute in my own way to the memory of Dr. Paul. I first met Dr. Paul back in 1979, then as a student coming out of Woolmer's Girls' School. And uh, I had wanted, having well, finishing up high school, to do something with languages and wasn't so sure where to go and what to do. And after I'd really tried and did my research and couldn't find anything, my mother, who was an active PMP Women's Movement member, said to me, whenever you go back, huh? use both? This one? This one? Both. Oh, both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, not at all. My mother, who was a, an active PMP Women's Movement member, said whenever you are next in town and at school, just go up to PNP headquarters 
and ask for the general secretary because I'm sure he will be there or at least someone will be at PNP HQ that you could speak with. When I came, persons were there saying, you know, Dr. Paul is there, you can go in and see him. I never met no appointment. Nobody never really know me or no nothing. And I went in and had a very long conversation with Dr. Paul. And I was struck then by his obvious interest in this young student who came to seek advice and to see how the PNP through him could help in terms of what I had in mind. The result of that is that I ended up studying in Cuba for the next uh, six years or so after that. But that is how I met Dr. Paul. And what that meant is that every year that I came home on holidays, I was always, I always made sure that I spoke with him. And uh, I was always reminded of just the kind of person who Party. He was soft spoken. Um, he had no ears. You know, so often many of us who have had the privilege to serve in so many capacities take on some ears to ourselves and forget, you know, how it is to communicate with those who have been there with us in the struggle. Not so with Dr. Paul. The story is repeatedly told that when Dr. Paul returned to active service in the party in the late 70s, a comrade with a bellyache problem, as it was called at the time, discreetly pulled Dr. Paul aside to seek medical advice. After several efforts at explaining that his doctorate, a very uncommon word at the time, was in academia and that he was not a medical doctor the comrade was heard to lament to her friends i'm, I, I'm not a real real doctor you know? i'm not a real real doctor but that was dr paul he was always measured in his thinking and in his positions and even when he disagreed vehemently he took the time to explain it without that emotion and in a way that connected and made you able to see where he was coming from even if at the end of the day you did not agree he was never afraid to articulate his positions never a hardliner but one that stuck by his principles he was a natural mediator some would say always attempting to reach out to everyone trying to arrive at consensus he was a key member as most of us would know of the comrade peter phillips solid, of, solid as a rock campaign in 2005 however when requested by then president comrade portia simpson miller to become national campaign director for the 2007 general elections he unhesitatingly accepted the task and gave it his all This was just one of several demonstrations of his which he acted. He never put personal issues and personalities before the service. That was that is the hallmark of true comradeship, and we hear Dr. Paul for that. You know, in recent times, we have been discussing. A major constitutional some major constitutional changes in the party exploring giving the voting right to every registered financial member of the party for internal elections for the positions of president and vice president and that is a matter that many of us think is long overdue but what many may not know and in fact I have been reminded of this or told of this by Comrade Burke, who chaired the 1996 review of the Constitution, 
that in fact it was Comrade Paul Robertson at, NEC, at an NEC meeting in January 1996 who first raised the matter of every single party member being allowed to vote in internal elections. At the time it was a kind of out of the box thinking and of course then it was not enthusiastically received. We will await to see if uh, times have changed when next the matter is debated or discussed at annual conference. Comrades, today I salute Comrade Robertson for his glorious journey with the PNP. He was with us in the 1970s, became Deputy General Secretary in 1977, elevated to General Secretary in 1983, and was our national campaign manager for the victorious 1989 general elections. He served during the 1990s, at one point being our national treasurer, and became a vice president in the early 2000s. And in spite of not holding any leadership position since retiring as a member of parliament in 2006, he has worked relentlessly many times in spite of his health challenges always always heeding the call the trumpet has sounded my country my countrymen all awake from your slumber and answer the call and that dr paul did on every single occasion without fail hail the man Thank you, Comrade Dr. Angela Brown Burke. So, we will invite to the stage now our General Secretary, Comrade Dr. Dayton Campbell, and then after Comrade Campbell, we'll invite Comrade Aluna Samba to give her tribute. Covered zone. Covered party leader, covered Mark Golding. And I want to say the next Prime Minister of Jamaica. Comrades, officers, members of parliament, comrades of the executive, the persons who are the heart and soul of our movement. The soldiers and the foot warriors, I greet you with love. Let me also make special recognition of Comrade Robertson. It is certainly a pleasure to have you here with us. And uh, I do hope we do justice in eulogizing and paying tribute to, in tribute to the man that was. I believe that Comrade Dr. Paul Robertson epitomizes what it means to be a comrade. I do believe that in his life he was a unifying force within the party. And I do hope that in death he will still be a unifying force within our noble movement. And that us being here today, tonight, will use this moment to honor his memory by coming together to ensure that his wishes, his dream for a better Jamaica led by a People's National Party will become a reality. You've heard of his rich history within the party. Serving during the 1980s when friends were few and the party was out of government not dissimilar to what it is today that he served at that time and he was able to pull the movement together in supporting party leader michael manley to ensure that the pnp even though we were out of office we were never out of power because we were still able to impact changes within this country dr paul served in many offices, but as General Secretary, we are probably 
that is it in some sense and I like in some sense. He is soft spoken and uh, I suspect he wouldn't have many enemies. I am not soft spoken and I do have a few enemies. <laughs> However, what it is that cause and cause us to beauty is the love for the People's National Party and the fact that we know that there are persons in this country, some born, some not yet born, who are depending on this movement to ensure that they can have a rightful place in this country. He was a scholar and a gentleman. His conversations were intellectually stimulating. I went to St. Anne to meet with him when I became General Secretary because I thought that I should have a discussion with some of the former General Secretaries to find out how this work go. And in speaking to him, his interest in the party, his interest in contributing to the party and to have the best wishes for the party, he wanted Comrade Leader for me to have a discussion with him on the internal polls that we are doing so that we could discuss those and strategize around those for the betterment of the party and for whatever election that we are approaching. So right through to the end, he was a dedicated comrade of our noble movement. When he was in the St. Anne's Bay Hospital, I can remember I called Dr. Francis Linton, who's a comrade on that side that I, I know, to discuss the case with him and he went there and he said, boy, it's coming around. There are some little issues and wasn't really aware of where he was, but he thought he was coming around and were optimistic. And by the next day he called to say, boy, he made a turn for the worst. And we lost a giant of our movement. But you know, in paying tribute, I like to look at the full person. And though the PNP played a pivotal role in his life, and I know he played a significant role, but there are other components to his life as well. And always, life reminds us of The fact that life itself will always come to an end. And therefore it is important how we choose to live our lives. And so we must always use the death of someone to draw us close or closer to our own God and our own mortality must become more apparent to us every time someone passes on. And there's a songwriter by the name of Shirley Caesar that says, it's hard to come in contact with God and remain the same. I don't care who you are, it's hard to come in contact with God and still be the same. There has to be some form of change once you have an interaction with God. And it brings me to a scripture, Pastor. Back in scripture, there's a story about a woman that they said had an issue of blood. And I don't plan on preaching tonight, even though I feel like I could preach that word. But there's a woman with an issue of blood. In today's age, they probably said that she had menorrhage or something else, but that in those days they call it an issue of blood. She went to a lot of physicians to seek help, but she did not get the help she sought after. One day she heard that Christ himself was passing by. And in the olden days when females were not brought to the front and the society was misogynistic, and all sort of things. She pressed in a crowd and all that she could touch party leader was the hem of the garment of Jesus. 
And when she touched the hem of his garment, Christ turned around and said, Who touched me? His disciples looked at him as if something was wrong with him. How can you be in a crowd and ask, Who touched me? There are bodies touching you. But he said, I felt virtue leave my body because God himself can recognize the touch of those who are seeking and are in need of his saving. And so all of us must use this moment to reach out and touch Christ himself so that we can have the necessary change in our life, in our families, in our political party, that what we do will be sanctioned by God himself and it will put the interests of God, country and man at the forefront. I believe that the People's National Party is better for the life of Dr. Paul Robertson. We are a better movement because he has served. And I do believe that his memory must be in some way etched in the story of the People's National Party. And it was fitting that tonight we meet like this to pay tribute to a wonderful servant of the people. May his soul rest in peace and perpetual light shine on him. Here in the man, God bless you, comrades, and have a good evening. Comrade Leader, Comrade Minister Scott, Comrade Members of Parliament and Councillors, Comrades, Workers and Warriors of the People's National Party, I greet you well. I'm here to speak about Dr. Paul. You've heard about what he did in the People's National Party. But I want to talk about Dr. Paul, who was my friend. You know, when we won the elections in 1989, Dr. Paul was Minister of Information and Culture, and he appointed me to the board of the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission. That was the first time that I was being appointed to a government board. It was also an opportunity for people who didn't know before that I was a member of the People's National Party. And that is another story altogether. Because not everybody who worked for the People's National Party could be up front all the time. I got to know Dr. Paul through the politics, but I got to build a relationship with him, more so when I was contesting the elections in Southeast St. Anne. And Prime Minister P.J. Patterson asked Dr. Paul, as well as Comrade Maxine Henry Wilson, to give up their positions as ministers of government to work full time in the Secretariat of the People's National Party. And they both agreed. I could say a lot more about Comrade Maxine Henry Wilson, but tonight I'm here to talk about Comrade Paul. And Comrade Paul gave advice. He was everywhere in that elections, I recall, including Celtic St. Anne. And then there was a time when I joined him in the cabinet. He was Minister of Foreign Affairs. He had had several other
portfolios before. And I got to know him even better. And then he moved to live in Southeast St. Anne, to live in Beulah Park. And I would meet up with him. Actually, the house where he was living just when he died was the second house in Beulah Park where he lived. I got to know him very well. Those of you who know me well and who know Paul well know that there are some stories that I could not tell in places like this. And it's not because, and I want to make it very clear, Dr. Paul and I never had a relationship which was anything other than a friend. I want to make that very clear. Because there was a particular incident that some people know about and out of that incident when we met up Paul would say you see that girl there me sleep with her already you know it was not sexual let me get that very clear Colleen it was not you know that but I think that that particular experience which happened in 19, we won in 1989, in 1990, because we had a fabulous Jamaica independence, and those of us who are on the board, and Dr. Paul, as the minister, took the staff of the JCDC down to Roar, that house. Yes, the, 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 the Royal River. The, the protocol house yes laughing waters yes as a result of that particular incident i stopped drinking white rum <laughs> white rum is not a good thing to drink it does all kinds of things to you and make you forget but needless to say it was above board it was very very above board and it is something that we joke about but when paul came to live in southeast saint anne we became very good friends i can say i know things about paul that many people do not know and i'm not going to tell you about them not at all there are some things that is to be left among friends and in Paul's memory I am here tonight I'm leaving here and going back to my house in Monique as soon as possible but I when I was asked to speak I said I had to come Paul was one of the most gentle persons I know did you know that Paul have a little dog I don't even remember the name of the dog and that little dog would never give you a break when you go to visit Paul. It got to the point where he had to close the dog off in rooms so that we could sit down without, without the dog, the dog jumping all over us. In recent times, his grandson has been living with him. And that was excellent. I spoke to his daughter, Damali, earlier on this week. And that's Damali's mother. Damali is the mother of the grandson who has been staying with Paul and he has been a great help to Paul and I want to now also speak about comrade please forgive me I have a um, brain fog from the COVID which caused me to walk with this stick you call his name Manly Boyn I need to speak about comrade Manly Boyn and the kind of support that Comrade Boyne gave to Comrade Paul. It was in fact Comrade Boyne who took him to the hospital that Thursday to St. Anne's Bay Hospital. And Comrade Paul was having some problems breathing and they therefore put him in isolation. And Manley was very distressed that because of that he was unable to see Paul until he got the news the Saturday of his passing. But Comrade Manley was the kind of friend 
that everybody needs to have and Paul spoke to me about Comrade Manley and the support that he gave him when he had his surgery late last year helping him through his recovery Comrade Paul was the kind of person that you could just go and sit down and talk and he would have good advice to give you he I, I must say that I feel very, very bad that I was not able to visit him during that last week. And the reason for that is that I had a death in my family also. And the Thursday when he was taken to the hospital was the day when we were having the memorial for my sister-in-law who died suddenly. And just the weekend before that, we were passing, heading on to the the toll and you can see Paul's house at Beulah Park as you go through the Golden Grove toll and you know comrades at the back really know and I said to my son and my sister who were in the car I need to go and see Paul. I had this feeling that I want to go and see Paul. And my plan was to have him during that week. And you know how things are, the week always goes off and you don't get to do it. But I'm very glad that I've got this opportunity to just pay tribute to my friend, Dr. Paul. To pay tribute to him and all of life that he gave to the People's National Party. Dr. Paul was a person who supported the party and not personalities in the party. He supported the People's National Party. I do not think that there was a time when he was called upon and he did not say, here I am, send me. And I just want to say, that's the kind of comrade that we all should thrive to be. Supporters of the People's National Party. And when the party calls us, we say, here I am. Send me. What do you want me to do? Because as you heard from the General Secretary and from the party leader, even when Comrade Paul was not well, he was still willing to do what he could for this party. And so I really am very pleased that I got a chance to say this publicly. And although I know many of you waiting with bated breath to hear the private stories, you're not going to hear it tonight. If you catch me, and I might have had a, a white room, I might tell you a little more. But until then, comrades, let us lift up Comrade Paul, who was the epitome of what a comrade is to be. And to say to the Lord, hold him under your wings and let him rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade Asamba, for that warm recollection of your memories with Comrade Robertson. As we move forward, I want to invite Comrade Colin Fagan. Now, Comrade Fagan, if I'm correct, you succeeded Dr. Robertson. And so we want to invite you to the stage to give your tribute. And after you're through, we'll invite Comrade Fitz Jackson to also join us. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman, Comrade Party Leader, 
Comrade General and Secretary of the Party. Mike, 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 Mike. Okay. Comrades all. Comrades all. This one is low. You sure? All right. I want to thank the party for giving me this opportunity to speak and bring tribute on behalf of the people of Southeast St. Catherine. Taking the button from Carl Rattray, Dr. Paul Robertson entered elective politics in 1993, where he served the people of Southeast St. Catherine up to 2007. I am sure you will agree with me that he was an outstanding individual with an incredible friendly personality. I met Dr. Paul when he was General Secretary of the party, but really got to know him when I served as one of his counselors. In fact, when I met him as General Secretary, I met him in Crossroads. There was a big demonstration. The party had a demonstration in that turbulent time and the police decided that they would break up the demonstration and dr paul said well we shall not be removed and we are going to take the people up to the pegasus so we moved forward and went and took over the hotel that was dr paul in fact he was telling everybody that they should just get water and use the rug and towels to ensure that the tear gas is not a problem. The news of his passing came to, to me and I'm sure all of Southeast St. Catherine and the rest of Portmore as a shock because for me it was only the week before the constituency secretary, Comrade Primrose Scott, and myself were discussing and planning to visit him in St. Anne, uh, where he lives. But was, that was not to be. The, the constituency would really like to remember him as a man who was very involved in the community. He would try his best to ensure that, yes, he would try his best to ensure that the community organizations stay alive. In fact, there was a period when the entire Portmore was very, very organized in respect to Citizens Association. I mean, it is still there, but not as strong as in those days. We had the Joint Citizens Association, the All Health Shell Group, the um, Greater Portmore Joint Council, and many, many Citizens Association. But those in those in Southeast St. Catherine were like the Edgewater Citizens Association, Portsmouth, Waterford, Westchester, Independence City, um, Cumberland, the Trisector, and all those groups were very, very involved. And Dr. Paul would be very involved with those groups. You know, there are some, there are some politicians who really don't like those independent groups because they believe that they are actually coming at the politicians. But in the case of Dr. Paul, he would always want to encourage those groups and work with them. 
Dr. Paul on the national side was Minister of Foreign Affairs at one time and I can remember Dr. Paul leaving wherever he's coming from, whether it is Japan, whether it is Korea, whether it is China, and would leave and come straight to a community meeting. I had good memory of him because we would discuss and talk about Portmore in respect to the causeway. And all of Jamaica would remember how we had problems in Portmore. Trafficking, traffic coming out of Portmore and coming into Portmore. Persons used to have to leave their houses at 4 o'clock in the morning to get to work at 8 o'clock. Dr. Paul was the man who was tasked with the responsibility to ensure that that is solved. To the extent where he was almost crucified because when the highway 2000 was being built dr paul through his influence in the cabinet was able to get one leg of the highway through portmore but that would come at a cost and to really convince the people of Portmore that they would have to pay to get into Portmore. That was a huge task for Dr. Paul. I remember persons, good friends of Dr. Paul, said that they wouldn't vote for Dr. Paul because they're not going to leave, come off the causeway and get to their veranda and have to pay a toll. But Dr. Paul was convinced, but that, that, that is the way to go. And he, the causeway that you see going into Portmore today is based on his agitation and his work. And um, today, we have a good road going into Portmore. One of the other areas that Dr. Paul was very involved with was the telephones. The younger people might not know that there was a time when line phones, line phones was a very difficult, it was very difficult to get a phone in your house. That was it in Portmore. But Dr. Paul worked hard, worked hard to ensure that every household in Portmore, in Southeast St. Catherine in particular, could have a landline if you so wish. I remember one meeting at the Edgewater Community Center. That meeting went into chaos because Dr. Paul came to address the meeting but did not have very good words to say that phones would come the next week or the next month. Luckily, Dr. Paul also had good friends. Friends like Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller, our dear former president of the party, Portia Simpson Miller, husband, was in charge of the cable and wireless at that time in Jamaica and had some, um, was able to assist Dr. Paul, and today we have landlines, and landlines now are going out, and people now are more with the cell phones. There's another area of that I'd like to, to say about Dr. Paul, the municipality. The municipality did not just come about because There was a, the politician, Dr. Paul, and many of us were not, were not involved. In fact, I don't believe that it would have happened without persons like Dr. Paul, who was very influential and was the only member of parliament at the time in the cabinet from Portmore. And so... 
when the people of Portmore wanted to have their own municipality and to in take charge of their own matters. Dr. Paul did not run away from the people. He did not run away from the Giant Citizens Association. He did not run away from the All Hailsha Group. He did not run away from the uh, Greater Portmore Giant Council. He was very, very active working with the people, working with all of us, working with the people of Portmore to ensure that municipality would be Dr. Paul. His involvement with his constituents was never a time that you would go to him from what I know. And um, there are many requests. When we were in, when I was in council, we used to ask councillors, we used to talk about from the, from the womb to the tomb. But Dr. Paul was a man who would deal with almost any matter from the womb to the tomb. And um, I mean, it was his own, a lot of times it would have been his own funds. They said that he would walk with a checkbook. And everybody who asked for something, he would just write a check. That too could have been a demise. But he was kind hearted. He was loving. And was it was always difficult for him to say no. I've had many, many talks with him. He would stop by my house from time to time. We would have a few drinks. And talk about the constituency. He had a love for community development. And in fact, was one of those persons who you could say is a community builder. I think that Jamaica has lost a giant. And in fact, maybe you could call him also a preacher because every church, every church, I'm talking about every church in Southeast St. Catherine could claim him as a member of that church. Whether it is Catholic, Seventh-day Adventist, Church of God, whatever it is, Latter-day Saints, it would be, he would be that man you can talk to. We could talk a lot, I see the chairman, the chairman of the stands, but we know so much about Dr. Paul that we could just continue on and on. But we are going to miss him. Um, his soul, may his soul rest in peace and light perpetually shine on him. Long live Dr. Paul. All right, thank you, Comrade Fagan. I'm going to invite Comrade Jackson to come, but while he comes, we are asking the driver of 3087GJ to please see how you can move. Somebody is trying to get out, so that's 3087GJ. <laughs> Comrade party leader, officers of our noble party, comrades all, friends, I greet you good night. 
I'm going to be very brief. I'm going to be very brief because I don't want to get into the repetition. Many things I would have said were said before. Alone, alone in particular, spoke about the personal side of Dr. Pa Paul. We all know the various positions that he has served in, in government and in our party. But I'll just briefly touch on the personal part of it. You know, the shirt I have on, you might see, you'll see Paul, Dr. Paul Monitor. I, we I wear it. I, I thought it was so fitting to wear it tonight. It's one of the memorabilias I kept. And I still can't fit in it, Omar. From when Dr. Paul ran as a vice presidential candidate for our party. And I make reference to it because to work on behalf of Dr. Paul's candidacy was an easy thing to do. Because any of us who knew Dr. Paul, any of us who were a comrade, would find it easy to support Dr. Paul for any position that he chose to serve in. And as I was saying to Comrade VP Eugene a moment ago, one of the things that stand out for me about Paul for the over about 30 years now that I have known him and working with him, Positions were not of importance to Paul. It was service. The opportunity to serve his party and his country. That meant a lot to him. And so he never had to be in any position to give of himself. Once the party call on him to serve, he answers. Even if he is if, even if he's physically not so able his heart is willing and he would come forward colin mentioned about paul in portmore as you know colin as was mentioned succeeded him in southeast apart from being colleague members of parliament together we were neighboring members of parliament in portmore and one of the things i finally remember about paul and i heard colin made mention about paul and the churches Paul belonged and claimed the churches so much that he also wanted to claim the churches in my constituency. That was right on the border. It was Portmore New Testament Church where I can say Comrade Blair pastored. And Paul would insist that it is his church and it is in his constituency, notwithstanding the electoral boundary saying otherwise. So we, we came, to, we had a truce. It belonged to the both of us. But having said that, you know, one of the things that Paul always pointed out to residents, not just comrades in Portmore, that in Portmore there are imaginary constituency boundaries. He being a PNP MP, I am a PNP MP, all, both of us have a common cause and a common purpose. Therefore, we are in common service to the people of Portmore. And therefore, it was not important which side you belong to of the boundary. You belong to Portmore, you belong to the two comrade members of parliament. One of the things that I only, I can always remember about Paul. You know, Paul have a way of breaking important and critical issues with you in a very subtle way. So he'll call up and say, Fitz, we have to talk, you know. And we sit down and we chit chat. And then he hear Paul say, what I really want to talk to you about, you know. But he, he made you feel so comfortable before that you are ready to engage with him and on his terms. Because Paul underscored that he's your friend in respect of the issue that he wants to deal with after he left the seat as member of parliament we work closely in Portmore politically 
And what I found interesting, you know, for even until now, Paul is my senior. Not only in age, but in political e experience and political expertise. And so I always defer to Paul. Even after office as member of parliament. Even after office as an officer of the People's National Party. But Paul, interestingly, never failed to recognize your own office. And that speaks to the humility of the person that he was. You know, comrades, I was walking in a while ago and I muttered about Paul. And I'm saying, I said to the, to the comrade, we need many more Pauls in our party today. Many more Pauls in character. Many more Pauls in terms of loyalty. Most importantly, many more comrades who are committed to the cause of the party and not our own personal advancement. Because that is what stands out more to me about Paul. As I said a moment ago, it was not the position that he is in, but it's the purpose and the mission. We need more sentiments of Paul in our midst. And I believe the more that comes to the fore, the stronger the party would be, and the more so the party would be on the path of fulfilling the purpose of our existence. Comrades, long live Paul Robertson for me. In life and even after life, he lives. Comrades, one love. All right. So thank you. Thank you, Comrade Jackson, for that refreshing remembrance. And there's so many lessons that a young comrade like me, you know, can learn from the life of this great comrade. So I hope we are taking note of the characteristics that we should seek to emulate as comrades from the life of this powerful man. So we're going to close this first segment of tributes. And we're going to change the tempo a little bit. So I'm going to invite a musical tribute, which will come to us at this moment. Is the tribute ready? All right, so we're queuing up that tribute. But in the meantime... tribute is ready so I'm gonna invite Carl Dawkins to come to the stage and grace us with some soulful sounds please welcome Carl Dawkins My name is Carl Dawkins and uh, I should say welcome all you P and P because we are here to get paid and we come a long way, very long way. Moving on up, can you please play? On the top of the street, you follow me. Let's 
Always hang around Early in the morning We are the night But well, we're not jamming or rambling Always in a fight Do plug is alright It's alright Come along Join the fight I say Hey, hey, plug it brown. Come from the bad part of town. Next track, could you please play from the top? It'd be good. Yeah. It's not the top, but I'll just sing what you got. Hey, man. Winds on my skin tonight. My favorite star is just flickering, it's bright. Star of the East, just like a red, gold, and green. Reminding me, call your gentle to your queen. Half a moon's in the clouds tonight. A new girl, the feeling is right. Yes, I want just to love tonight. Who girl, the feeling is right. Said I want to love you tonight Oh baby, you keep it so tight Yes, I got what to love It's alright with me, baby Oh girl, you're driving me crazy, you see Oh baby, now Hey baby, now Coming in hot Oh, yes, I'm lightning Teach I love sometimes get frightening Yes, I'm harder I'm Mount Everest I'm the seven seas I'm deeper than that, yes Full moon be in the clouds tonight And G child, the feeling is tight Full moon, yes, it's right there, baby Who girl, come drive me real crazy I want to, tonight And who girl, the feeling is right Yes, I got to love you tonight who oh, baby, you keep it so tight, it's just for me. Oh, baby, now, love that you see, I'm calling you over. Baby, let it be tonight. Hey, baby, now, coming hot. Oh, yes, I'm lightning. Tea girl, sometimes love get frightening. Hala, Mount Everest. Seven seas are some deeper than the years. I wanna pull your moon tonight. Gee girl, the feeling is tight. Got to pull up your moon tonight. I see child, you keep it so tight. Yes, I got water tonight. You wanna fix the track from the top? Sometimes we like it from the top. But a Paul gone, but Carl there, you know. And the whole over there. I go keep it right and tight. <laughs> just love poor, them say JLP mean just love poor. We know you know that. We come for fix it all right. I think. We are all thinking in the right direction. Could you please play the track from the top? It's very beautiful. Cause enough nice, beautiful ladies in the place, you know. I fix it up, eh? the man them come grace them place. Could you please play? Play the thumb drive from the top of the thing. But baby, I love you when you're going away. And I'm gonna get to one of these days. Girl, I love you. The soul will leave, but I'll make it anyway I will. Lord, yes, we will, baby. With the thumb drive and the rhythm in there. I gave it to the lady. I don't want to lose that thumb drive. My rhythm tracks are on. You want satisfaction? You have people with PNP. I said, said. 
Bu sahnesi bak sen. Çocuklar ise gel sahnesi bak. Yes, you. Yaman deyince Osmanlı. I'll tell her truthfully about this good world in me. Said I want peace of mind. I'm gonna get it. I know it's there somewhere for me. Gonna get it. Know that I will. Come on, take come, come, come on. Let me find it, the track. Well, I'll give it to the lady and let her get it back. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Dawkins. Thank you for that musical rendition. All right, so we're going back to our list of tributes, and I'm going to invite. I'm going to invite. Comrade Raymond Price to join us on stage. And after Comrade Price, we will invite Comrade Mikhail Phillips to give his tribute. Thank you, Comrade Gabriella. Good evening, comrades. Good evening, Comrade Party Leader, Comrade Officers. I will be very quick. I w I'll take a line or a cue from the party president who says that he has not worked that long with Comrade Paul from the start, so he didn't earn the reason to speak long. Well, I'll be even more quick than he was. I remember Comrade Paul as uh, being one of the kindest members of the leadership of the party at the time I joined the party. When I, I, I don't mean to be critical, but sometimes I wonder about those university students who are now graduating and who are seeking to have participation in the People's National Party, if they have the opportunities that I had with persons like Comrade Paul Robertson. And when I said that he was one of the kindest members of the senior leadership of the parties, I don't mean in terms of giving tangible things or giving money. I mean in terms of giving willingly his experiences with those of us who are just coming in. I entered the People's National Party through the PNP Patriots and I saw Comrade Ludlow Rennix and some other members of the group at the time I joined. And it was just on the eve of the 2002 general elections. So my first actual memory of Paul Robertson was him attending a Patriots meeting when we had our office at Bremer Avenue. And he advised us that the then Prime Minister, Comrade P.J. Patterson, was contemplating the next general elections. And he was explaining that it had been 13 long years. As I see Comrade Carl Kirkland there as well, he would have been at that meeting. And he started to list all of the things that the People's National Party administration had been contemplating that had been achieved. And I remember perhaps regretting it now that I'm thinking about it, asking what might have been a very facetious question. And I said to him, have there ever been any short years? And he asked me, why did I ask him that? And I said, because you have stressed 13 long years on so many occasions. So I'm wondering if there were any short years. And I said to him that all of these things that you have listed the JUTC, the modernization of the ports, the successful liberalization of the economy. Were these things important? And he says, well, do you think they were important? And I said, I believe that they were, in fact, solid achievements. Now, we later in that campaign launched a document called the Solid Achievements Documents. But the most important outcome of that meeting was when I said to him, that as a new member of the Patriots, and I must call a couple of names, Comrade Christopher Brown, Comrade Donovan Nelson, Comrade Mikkel Phillips, who were all in the room, and they were also very supportive that as the newest member of the group, they allowed me to be speaking with this hero based on somebody that you grew up seeing on television and um, hearing about, actually. And I said to him that, to me, the simple thing that the PNP had to ask the country to do is to not to stop the progress. The YO would later on add the tagline, log on to the future. And that Saturday morning at a PNP Patriots meeting with the facilitation and the patience of Dr. Paul Robertson, 
the slogan for the successful 2002 general election campaign was crafted. Don't stop the progress, log on to the future. The second time I worked closely with Dr. Paul Robertson was the following election campaign, which was a very different campaign for two reasons. One, the outcome was not the one we wanted because while we were successful, Comrade Carlo Robertson, in 2002, we were unsuccessful in 2007. The 2007 campaign had been torpedoed by a matter that 16 years later is still being discussed in the Supreme Court this very day. And I remember we had a press conference and the press corps was particularly hostile. And Dr. Robertson said, Raymond, let the storm blow, but you must not be disturbed. I thought about that day on many occasions, and I wonder if I was actually being thrown to the wolves. But I actually believe, and accept what Dr. Paul said afterwards, that you don't get the experience that you need in politics unless you are given the opportunity to get the experience. It might just have been his nice way of saying, yes, I'm throwing you to the wolves because you have to face the press. But I felt that there was an able and caring coach that was going to protect me from any hazard. The final thing I will say, as I think about younger persons coming into the party at this stage, the People's National Party that I joined, there was never a question about who we were and if we were united. And in an interaction just this week up at the University of the West Indies, I felt rather uncomfortable responding to several questions. Well, it was the same question asked in several different ways. Who are we? Are we fractured? People holding up their phones with different things of different posts of persons they recognize to be Team PNP, saying things that were, to be very frank, quite embarrassing. And I, I long, I'm not that old, but I'm not that young. I long for that People's National Party, that when you stepped on the university campus, for example, people didn't say, you're really in the PNP. Rather, they would laugh at anybody who claimed that they were in the JLP. And a number of persons who have spoken before spoke to the unifying or the pacifying approach of Dr. Paul Robertson. And I don't think that his passing means that that element of who we are as PNP has passed with him. In fact, if anything, and touching again on something the party leader mentioned, the experience on Sunday at Heroes Park, as we paid similar tribute to the late Michael Manley, and by the way, this is my third such event for the day, and I'm leaving here to go to Lake Spend for another one. And I am beginning to get very concerned that most of our activity in the People's National Party is marking a great comrade who has passed and not necessarily celebrating enough of those who are on their way in or still active in the movement. And I close with the simple prayer that we must continue to be the People's National Party that we were established to be because in our absence or in the absence of the PNP, there is abject anxiety and chaos. And I'm not being tribalistic as I'm often accused of. I am making a sincere assessment of what I believe would be the future of this country if this administration is to continue undisturbed by what ought to be the most formidable political organization in the English-speaking Caribbean. That was the PNP of Paul Robertson, and it must continue to be the PNP that Jamaica has access to. Thank you very much, comrades. Comrade Leader, Comrade Carleen, our Auntie Carleen, 
Comrade officers, comrade workers, warriors of the People's National Party, comrades from Southeast St. Catherine, you know, when I was asked to bring, to say something about Dr. Paul, I mean, I, my, my memory went way back. Because I remember as a younger man, a little youth, when I'm still a young man. Yeah? Remember the days of my father, Comrade Davis, um, KD Knight, or John Jr., after a NEC or a party meeting would come and sit on the veranda and talk politics talk about the party in a way that as a young man you wonder what is this organization that you're speaking of but as i got older and i remember my first election that i worked in in 1989 my comrade paul robertson was general secretary Back then in the campaign office, you used to have a two-way radio right at the foot of the step. You remember Auntie Colleen? Yeah? And I was put there to man that radio. Because that radio would call in when we had two-way radios then. When they would call in when we needed help and reinforcement at the different polling stations across Kingston and St. Andrew. But when I sat there and I think about the history of the People's National Party, and I think about that period which was even before my own active participation in politics, but I don't think that as a party we talk about that period from 1983 back to 1989. And the contribution of some comrades like Comrade Paul Robertson, who became General Secretary in 1983. The victory that we had at the local government in 1986, that helped us in the elections of 1989, in bringing back the People's National Party to a place that we are the beneficiaries of now. And if we don't remember that history as we always said that any road will take us to that place that we don't know if we don't remember the struggles of comrades like comrade paul robertson but comrades he was my political mentor and i i i reminisce on when i decided that i wanted to enter po representational politics in 19 in 2007 east rural st andrew my father said to me that i would be a madman to enter re representational politics and i'm standing here because of comrades like maxine henry wilson paul robertson and comrade Porsche simpson miller who believed in me in ensuring that i offered myself for this great and noble movement but not only that he became my political mentor but most didn't know that he was a farmer when i got involved in coffee at the Cali and paul had a farm there just before newcastle that i learned my early days on coffee farming right there on that farm and he went into banana he was a farmer at heart because no matter how he went into farming coffee never work out as well went into banana never work out as well but he went into sheep rearing into many things but we you know I, coming here i thought at how life has a way of going around in circles because he was there for me when i entered politics and in his, fine, in his last days in participating, because I remember 
when Damien had decided to go to Portland in that by-election. The day that Damien decided to go in, down to Portland, Comrade Paul Robertson who was living up in Long Mountain and I was down the road from him. I remember him coming to park his vehicle at my yard and we went to Portland for those eight weeks. If I was leaving to come to Kingston, he was with me. We ate out of the same pot. We ate out of the same box lunch. And we drank from the same flask of white rum. Yes, you remember that, sir? Yeah? Yes. But as a comrade leader said, if it, was, if it is one thing that you are sure of, was his commitment to the People's National Party. His commitment not only to the party, but to the building of a better Jamaica. I'm sure most of us could not say that we have heard him quarrel or shout. We always say, yeah, man. Yeah? yeah, man. But he was a great human being. Somebody that, and you know, comrades, when I think of a generation that is leaving us, a generation that Paul Robertson and many other comrades were a part of. And I think about even my dear friend and comrade Paul Burke. We do not write enough about the People's National Party. We don't write enough, comrade leader, about the history and the struggles of the People's National Party. We don't write enough of it. Because one of the things that is lacking right now is that political education but political education cannot be given of how we gave political education back in the 80s and the 70s and even the 90s but those comrades coming into the pmp right now need to understand the struggle and why we are the party that we are this great movement and i would love to see more of that taking place documenting the history it cannot be that Comrade Angela Brown works sit down with Paul and them sit down and talk about that. Those struggles. And Comrade Paul come to NEC and tell us about the history. But we don't have it to share with the other comrades. Auntie Colleen, even though when they're talking about others who are husband and wife in Parliament, you were there with Comrade Paul sitting in Parliament. But Comrade Leader, when I listened to Nigel Clark yesterday, I hope we don't sit down as a political organization, this great movement, and let him get away by talking about the 70s and not remind them of how divisive Edward Siaga was in the 80s. In the 80s, because the 80s were worse than the 70s, we had value in the 70s. But when you talk about tribalism, it was in 1980s under Eddie Siaga up to 1989 when we won power. And Nigel might not be versed in the politics, but we owe it to this movement to remind them of the great things that happened under Michael Manley and the People's National Party in the 70s. Eh? Believe me, it, it, it turned my heart yesterday when I hear him stop and spoke about the PMP and Michael Manley the way that he did. A journalist called me today and asked me, what are we going to do on election day now? Because normally it's the Manley we carry. Tell him, say, I pay a $100 bill me I carry. Because I don't carry no say I go to a polling station. Yeah? But comrades, comrades, the PMP is still a great organization. It is for us to remember comrades like Comrade Paul Robertson and many other comrades have, that have created that path for us. We need to remember them. And not just leave here tonight and on Saturday when we say goodbye to him. And then let that go into far distant memory. So the heart of the battle 
the sweet of the victory and our battle has started with work like from comrades like comrade paul robertson he was not only my mentor but he was a friend he was a father to me and he will be very much missed his trumpet has sounded and he has answered the call one love comrade paul one love pmp thank you comrade phillips thank you <laughs> all right so we're moving right along and to close out this segment of the tribute i want to invite comrade arnaldo brown to join me on the stage and to say a few words Thank you very much, Comrade Party Leader, the Chairman of the Party, Officers of the Party, Comrades all. I crave your indulgence because I'm going to be a little bit personal in relation to my tribute to Dr. Robertson. I had the opportunity to see him the 11th of January this year. And when I saw him, I understood that he wasn't keeping good health. But on the occasion that I saw him, he looked very fine to me. And we had a very good conversation that lasted about an hour. I was in transit from Kingston, heading to Montego Bay, when I went down and met with him in Lidford. You know... As I reflect in terms of my interaction with Dr. Robertson, I've known him for about 20 years. Because in 2002, in the latter part of that year, I was called to the bar in October of that year, and that was shortly after the People's National Party had won that general election. And I was actually at a law firm, Comrade Golding, Archer Cummings and Company. But I had my sights set on political involvement. So as a young lawyer leaving school, I applied to Jampro, and they wrote to say that they didn't have an opening. And then by 2003, when the cabinet was formed, Dr. Robertson was appointed as the Minister of Development and they went into their file 13 cabinet and took out my resume and because we had just won the election I said it wouldn't hurt to put on there that I'm associated with the People's National Party particularly the PNPYO and I think that's how my resume was pulled and there was an interview and that interview was transferred to Jamaica House and I was engaged and assigned as a special advisor to Dr. Robertson in January of 20, 2003. And from that time until now, that association has continued. And in working with Dr. Robertson, I indicated to him that I had an interest in the politics. And he introduced me to Southeast St. Catherine, placed me on the party executive, introduced me to region four and in fact as a result of dr paul's intervention i became secretary of region four for an extended period of time going up to 2007 and i continued to work in the political vineyard ran in his constituency as a um, local government candidate in the westchester division in 2007 and ultimately in 2011 when that opportunity came i um ran on the pnp ticket and became the first member of parliament for east central st catherine which was a newly created seat in st catherine and i'm saying all of this to say that it would not have been possible um carlene had it not been for dr paul robertson so when people speak about a mentor when they speak about um, you know, we use the term godfather. He was my godfather in the politics. And I remember working with him in several 
by-elections, Mount Industry by-election, the Cornwall Mountain by-election, and that is where I understood what the political work was about, particularly in Mount Industry, because we were able to tell how many votes we were going to win by before the day was over and before we had reached a certain point in the day. So I owe more than a debt of gratitude to Comrade Robertson in terms of my own personal development and in terms of my political journey up to this point. And whilst it is that I had seen him on the 11th of January of this year, when I heard that he was in the hospital and then I heard that he died, it came as a shock. Because that was really the last thing you were expecting to hear. And I could go on and on and on and on. But I think the speakers before us have located Paul in the context of nation building. And I believe that there's work to be done in terms of his legacy. And I, I, I make this part in short because as the Minister of Development, many people underestimated what that function was about. But when you look at all the developments that have been implemented along the northern coast of Jamaica, Paul was a clearinghouse to ensure that government bureaucracy didn't stifle these projects. And there are many um, projects that he was able to unblock in that particular function and in that particular portfolio. And again, as I said, there are many things I could speak to, but I will just leave by saying that Paul was a consummate comrade. He was a consummate party man. And as somebody said before, that when it comes on to the People's National Party, he was loyal to the party to a fault. May his memory live on forever. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Comrade Brown. So we're moving along and we're going to change the tempo again, right? So I'm going to invite Mr. Kenlyn Beckford and band to give us a musical tribute. Please make them welcome. Please make them welcome, Mr. Kenlyn Beckford. All right, so my apologies, my apologies. We're gonna welcome an artist, and he goes by the name of King Kong. So, I'm gonna invite, thank you. And then we'll hear from the band. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. I've been in invited here to do a tribute to Dr. Paul Roberts and I'm here to do that. There's a lot have been said about this gentleman. I know that he's an amazing person, live an amazing life, leave us with amazing memories. So I would like to sing an amazing song. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise for it was great that found my liberty I never know 
Just why Christ came to love me so. He looks beyond my fault and so my need. I shall fall For me, I'll marvel at the grace that found my falling soul. He looks beyond my fall. And so, my name. Thank you. Where I 
a bitch with his thumb. And you see the world You see a night of confusion
tribute section and allow the final few comrades to pay their tribute to the man that we're here to celebrate tonight and so i want to invite comrade a stalwart of our party comrade omar davies to grace us and to offer his tribute after comrade davis leaves us then i'll invite comrade heather robinson to also join us Oh, yes. yes. This one? Comrade party leader, comrade officers, comrade Robertson, Carleen. Okay. This is three. Well, comrades, after that, um, uh, that tribute section, it's very hard to come in at this stage, but I cannot, I couldn't let the evening pass without saying a few things about a great comrade, comrade Paul Robertson, who I, I have known for close to 50, I knew her close to, 50 years and someone who in various ways contributed to the building of this noble movement the people's national party and i'm just going to tell say a, a few things which illustrate the contributions of comrade robertson very few people knew that know that paul had a blossoming academic career after his return from the University of Michigan in the 70s but he chose to enter the political not elective politics at that stage but working with the PNP and that then led to other areas of service in in the PNP very few people acknowledge and we need to understand that after the shellacking which we got in 1980 the PNP was in shambles and it fell to comrade Robertson to begin the rebuilding of the party and when we the decision was taken not to contest the bogus elections of 1983 the PNP embarked on something which had never ever been done before and I, I would hazard 
that it could never ever been done again be done again when we were out of parliament but step by step regain the confidence and the support from the majority of Jamaica Paul was instrumental in establish in establishing the people's forum which was a regular gathering of the PNP to discuss national issues and very soon there were more people interested in coming to the forum to find out the state of affairs than interested in going to parliament and the, Paul was in, in, involved integrally involved in setting that now Paul has been described before was very modest very few people would know that Paul wielded the power and authority which he did but an interesting thing about Paul during that period following the 1980 elections Paul was the person who took Michael's commands and Michael at times could issue co commands which a normal persons would say this can't work and then Paul would arrive and said Omar the comrade leader wants this to be done as a Paul is foolishness himself the comrade leader wants this to be